Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, to this special episode of Dose of Faith. And in today's show, we're going to discuss an accusation, an ugly accusation, that's being made against God. And it's important that we set the record straight, because it's unfair to label God something which He's not. And I'm sure you've all heard this allegation, that the God of Islam is a God of anger, a God of wrath, vengeance, and hate, a God that wants you to burn in hell, a God that created you to watch you suffer. And despite all that you've heard, I proclaim to you right here, right now, that Allah is a merciful and loving God. Ooh, yes. And today, people, I'm going to give you a dose of this love and mercy directly from the mouth of the Almighty Himself. I'm going to show you that despite all of our shortcomings, despite all of our sins and mistakes, God really loves us. Let's begin by picturing something. Just imagine that every time you sinned, you started to smell bad. And the more you sinned, the worse off you smelled. You know what would happen in such a situation? Considering the fact that we sin day in and day out, nobody would be able to stand anybody else. Your best friend won't be willing to put up with you because you stink so bad. Just think about how many times we talk about people behind their backs during the day, all the prayers we don't perform on time or even ignore. Consider how often we look at things we shouldn't be looking at. What about our disrespectful treatment to our parents? Man, we'd reek by the end of the first day. Thank God sin doesn't have a smell. But you know what, people? Even though it doesn't, everything on the face of this earth complains about our disobedience. Take, for example, Prophet Solomon's hoopoe bird. You all know the story. The little bird came to Prophet Solomon from a faraway place and informed him about a kingdom that worshipped the sun. He complained to him. How could they worship other than God when they eat from what the Almighty provides them? How could they sin against God when they depend on Him for everything? Even the angels questioned God about us when He told them He was going to put us on earth. They said, are you going to place on earth those who are going to cause nothing but problems and spread violence? Why are you going to put a sinner on earth? But you want to hear what God has to say? He says, O son of Adam, so long as you call upon me, and ask of me, I shall forgive you for what you have done, and I won't mind. O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, and were you then to ask forgiveness of me, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, were you to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, and were you then to face me, ascribing no partner to me, I would bring you forgiveness nearly as great as it. Even though nothing else could tolerate our disobedience, He who created us does. We ignore His commands all day long, but He's patient with us. All we do is disobey Him and He continues to stand up for us. Satan told God, I will continue to deceive the son of Adam as long as their souls remain within their bodies. Satan is using us against God. But your gracious God replied to him, By my glory and my majesty, I will continue to forgive them as long as they seek my forgiveness. Man, do you feel the love, people? Why is he doing all this? Because he loves you. Because his name is the merciful. Don't think that God is far away. He's approachable. He wants you to turn to him. We're all human. We all sin. We're weak. But he's always there for us. Whatever you've done, people, whatever sin you've committed, he would be willing to forgive you. But call out to him. Listen to this hadith. A servant, like you and me, committed a sin and called out, Oh Allah, forgive me for what I've done. And God says, My servant has committed a sin and has known that he has a Lord who forgives sins and punishes for them. Then he sins again and calls out, Allah, forgive me. And God says, My servant has committed a sin and has known that he has a Lord who forgives sins and punishes for them. The servant sins again and calls out, Allah, please forgive me. And your Lord says, My servant has committed a sin and has known that he has a Lord who forgives sins and punishes for sins. Do what you wish, my servant, for I have forgiven you. What God is this? What beauty is this? Aren't you happy that this is your God? Never think that he'll close the door in your face. No, the door is always open. You don't even have to knock. Guys, you know what I'm feeling at the moment? I don't know if you're feeling it too, but you know that sense of shame you get when you owe somebody so much 
when somebody's doing so much for you and you just can't pay them back? What if that somebody was a king and no matter how many times you ignore his commands, he tells you that his door is always open for you? And to add to all that, try to compare yourself to the rest of creation. Compare yourself to the sky. Compare yourself to the oceans. Compare yourself to the mountains, the planets, the galaxies, the universe. Despite the fact that you are worth absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things, the king is treating you like you're worth everything. Do you now know the feeling I'm talking about? You can't help it, you just gotta love him. Speaking of love, since we're going about claiming that God loves us, why does he throw some of us in hell? Brothers and sisters, what is God going to tell a woman whose child was brutally killed right in front of her eyes on the Day of Judgment? What do you think God is going to say to the poor lady whose life was totally destroyed because she was savagely raped? Um, sorry, but I can't punish those who wronged you because I'm a God of mercy? No, that would just be unfair. That's just wrong, man. Although we believe He's a loving God, we also believe He's a just God. Yo, but what if I never wronged nobody, man? What if I didn't spend my whole life completely disregarding God? What if I try hard to do what God says? Alright, I admit, I do slip all the time. I do have some serious screw-ups. But I always turn to Him for forgiveness. I cry at times because of what I did. I don't want to go to hell, man. Aren't a lot of us in the same boat? If you fall in this category, then pray, pray hard, that you have the following conversation with the Almighty on the Day of Judgment. As you listen to this hadith I'm about to say, Close your eyes and imagine that you are the servant God is talking to. On the day of judgment, as you stand in front of the king to be judged, he will say to you, approach me, my servant. So you approach him and he covers you so that you don't feel humiliated as your sins are displayed. You'd feel so bad if others found out about what you used to do in secret in this world. So he conceals you to comfort you. Then he says, do you remember this sin that you committed? You say yes. He asks again, Do you remember this other sin you committed? You say yes. Do you remember this sin and that sin and that sin and that sin? Imagine your level of stress at that moment, man. You'd think you're finished. Then he says to you, I concealed your sins for you during your worldly life. And here I am right now forgiving you for what you did. Go, my servant. For I have forgiven you. Wow. Guys, seriously. If after all this mercy and love you end up in hell, then you have got to ask yourself, what the heck did I do on this earth? We're now at the end of our episode, people. And I think by now we're all soaked with God's love and mercy. There's so much more wonderful things to say, but time is running out. But I'm going to leave you with one more hadith. You ready? God says, I am as my servant thinks I am. I am with him when he makes mention of me. If he makes mention of me to himself, I make mention of him to myself. And if he makes mention of me in an assembly, I make mention of him in an assembly far better than it. And if he draws near to me a hand span, I draw near to him an arm's length. And if he draws to me an arm's length, I draw near to him more than two times that. And if he comes to me walking, I go to him with speed. That's it, brothers and sisters. Take one step towards God and let him do the rest. Adios.